Hi everyone and welcome to another Power Apps Roadmap. Today we're going to be looking at implementing a dark mode theme to your app and generally look at managing colour schemes within your application. So you can see here I have started this application, just dropped in a text box button and a label and a lot of people still don't realise but there are pre-built themes available to you in this uh, drop down here uh, and it will reskin the uh, your application there's a variety of light ones mid tones and uh, dark modes but time and time again you'll find that these don't quite do uh, what you need them to and not everything will update and if you want to customize them and you'll often find that you'll spend a lot of time navigating through uh, very specific properties like hover fill or pressed fill um, and trying to match up what you've set them to so that it maintains a consistency throughout your application. So today's video is going to um, give you some pointers on corralling that colour information into one into one point and then you can just reference that for, uh, across your app so let's take a look at my demo that i've got running here this is super simple app it's a front page of an application where users are asked to select a, a sneaker and then continue on to the next page of the form and up here in the corner i have a drop down menu so just how i've got it set up i have the uh, color scheme information embedded into the on visible for the screen um, if you're developing your own app it's something you'd probably want to put into the app on start control but let's take a little look at what I have going on in here on visible I have two uh, collections that are being created one of them is for the sneakers that you can see in the gallery but the one that we're focusing on today is my theme list collection and you can see that I have two entries uh, one for my main theme and one for a dark theme and what I've done is I've sat down and catalogued each color and its RGBA value um, and added them into here. I tend to work on primarily a 60-30-10 rule where 60% of your screen is one color 30% is a second color and just 10% typically your a uh, call to action for that screen is the is the remaining 10% um, and it, uh, obviously that draws the focus to that one thing so if, to me that means um, a background color and the primary and the secondary these are my 60, 30, 10 uh, I do also often put in a highlight and a shadow for each one and I also typically put in a base 0 and a base 1 and those are the lightest and the darkest that I want to to get within the app. I tend to shy away from using full white 255, 255, 255 and equally try to shy away from using pure black 000, because they can be quite harsh in the eyes so uh, it can often add a little bit by just making it a, a, a slight tint of colour so once we've got that set up i set the items control of my drop down menu to be my theme list and every element in here has its color defined in relation to this drop down menu so the font color for this label that takes up that acts as a header is theme select selected text base zero so under the main uh, theme, the main color theme that's my uh, almost white and under the dark color theme is almost black uh, and I map out everything like this so in this instance I've used the secondary border color to be my selected item in my gallery and used the primary color uh, for my primary color for my next button and what that means is it will be consistent when you switch between the themes. Uh, all the elements are one colour will remain that colour, everything that's another colour 
will everything that's a sec a second colour will will match to be that second colour. So let's play this and we can see how it looks. Um, yeah, it's really simple. Switching between the two, recolors everything. You can see this is not this is just a few d degrees away from pure white, and this is a few degrees away from pure black. And you can see it makes things a little bit easier to read. I've left the the forward and back buttons on this gallery how they are, and I've added this layer here so you can see the selected item. And it takes care of my press, hover, controls, everything like that. Selected items, it's all it's all contained within. By defining my colours beforehand, it takes a lot of the guesswork out if I'm using a colour that isn't one of the that isn't one of the presets. Uh, yeah, like I don't have to just randomly pick and hope that I'm in the same area or jump backwards and forwards, different versions to make sure. Like I'm I'm only working with three or four colours or, or shades of those colours and you can also use uh, the colour fade formula on, on these so if I was to take a look at the fill for this I can still use the colour fade formula if I wanted to augment the uh, colours more let's make this one 50% just for our demo and you can see it's lighter still, it's got that 50% lightness attached to it. But we'll remove that from there because I'm quite happy with how that is. Uh, yeah, now the other thing I use to uh, keep track of all my colour schemes is I will occasionally keep a hidden uh, screen. So it's not linked to anywhere within the app for the end user. But I will use it to keep track of my colours. So if I play this, I have an independent uh, control just for switching the background colour between black and white. That in this instance, I will use pure white and pure black just to just as a reference, and I can switch between the two colours so I can see what's going to work. Where you can see there that I'm using, I, you should be able to see that there's a difference between those two blacks there. And any time I add a new element to my app. I try to add it in here first and that way I have a point of reference I can just grab one of these uh, elements copy it and then paste it into the new screen I don't have to worry about setting up the colour values for for that one element all I have to do is, is work on customising the, the unique properties of it like the uh, text value, placeholder text that kind of thing and that's all there really is to it. I will add my theme list collection formula into the description for this video so that you can get started. Um, I will leave a few links in the description for how you can generate your own colour schemes as well. Um, a website that I do like a lot for colour scheme generation is Coolers. You can generate RGB values out of here. Uh, you can lock colours in place if there's a couple that you particularly like and want to base your colour scheme around them. You can also adjust the lightness uh, and darkness of them. Yeah, this is a Coolers is a really popular uh, palette site, but there are several hundred, if not thousands, of others uh, that might that might work better for you. If you have any questions about what you've seen, drop me a line in the comments or find me on Twitter. It's at Power App Roadmap and send me your colour schemes. Uh, I'm always interested to see what people are doing in Power Apps. So send me a link or send me a screenshot and I'll check that out. So until next time, uh, take care and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.